All right, let's press to start. We are recording. Oh, we've already got friends trickling in. Fabulous. Yay. Thanks for joining us. We'll get started very shortly. We'll wait till we have a bit of a critical mass. Uh, in the meantime, I have turned on a poll. So let me know if you are able to see that. Um, just trying to get a sense of who's in the room, what do you, whether you guys are new to this, whether you've been delivering ACU exams for years, um, just to get to know who our, who our new friends are. Uh, are people able to see the, the polls? Oh yes, oh, the numbers are coming in. Oh, cool. see who we've got. I'm not able to see where people are coming in from. Maybe that's just when I reveal the results at the end. Um, oh, we've got a split of K-12 and higher ed, which is about what we were expecting. Awesome. Sweet. I love when we've got a mix because it means that we're going to get yeah. a mix of questions. Um, you know, we've also got a mix of educator, IT, admin, etc. Sweet. Awesome. Well, let's give people one more minute to trickle in. Um, obviously, if they arrive late or if they can't make it, uh, we are recording this and we'll be sending out the recording. So feel free to forward the email when we send it uh, to pals in your department who, who you think would enjoy this information. And if you feel like introducing yourself a little more fully, uh, feel free to chime in on the chat. Let us know, uh, you know, what you teach, what institution you're at, um, just how you're feeling on this Friday. Whatever you uh, you want to share with this fabulous audience we have here today. Great. Well. I feel like this is a timely crew. We've got a pretty, uh, got a critical mass. Um, so I'm going to end the end the poll in the hopes that I'm able to show it to you guys. Uh, sorry for being a bit Zoom incompetent, apparently. Um, and maybe I will start off with some housekeeping and introducing our dear friend, Sabrina Beck. So um, if you are here for set yourself up for successful testing with Autodesk certified user exams, you are in the right place. Thank you so much for joining us on a Friday. Uh, we are here with my dear colleague and friend, Sabrina Beck, who is the product manager for the Autodesk Certified User Program, among others here at Certiport. So Sabrina has dedicated her career to understanding what people need and building products that help them succeed in reaching their goals. Prior to coming to Certiport, Sabrina spent time in the textiles industry where she utilized CAD software and Adobe products to develop and launch clothing lines for one of the largest cut and sew manufacturers in the United States. If we have anyone in here who is in textile or, or fashion related departments, please let us know in the chat. Uh, that's <laughs> an audience we definitely want to want to start chatting to with more. Um, Serena was actually originally a music education major and she graduated with a BS in business marketing and earned her MBA from Brigham Young University. Um, she's pleased to work with Certiport with the work Certiport has done to be part of the solution in developing digital skills for students worldwide. So on that note, um, let's end the poll and see if we're able to see the results. Maybe not, oh, yes. Uh -huh. I think, um, and then I suppose I will stop sharing and let uh, Sabrina take it away. Go for awesome. it. Thank you, Rosie. Um, welcome everybody. I'm really excited uh, for to have you join us today and uh, talk about what you can do to prepare yourself for a successful Autodesk testing session. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. If I can find my mouse. And 
There we go. All right, can everybody see that? I'm hoping. Okay. Um, uh, like Rosie mentioned, my name, thank you for the thumbs up. That's awesome. I can see that on my screen. Um, they, uh, like Rosie mentioned, my name is Sabrina Beck and I'm a product manager for the Autodesk Certified User Program here at Certiport. Um, I am really excited to share with you some of the things that um, I have uh, learned from speaking to teachers on what is really important to help you um, prepare to have a successful um, testing session with Autodesk. Uh, just for those who um, might be new to CAD, uh, I'm just going to give a brief highlight of what our Autodesk Certified User Program is. Um, we call it the ACU program. It is a portfolio of entry level uh, certifications uh, through Autodesk. It is the entry level gateway for engineering, construction, architecture, manufacturing, and the entertainment industries. Um, the certifications align with CTE course requirements and curriculum and validate industry knowledge uh, using Autodesk software. We offer six Autodesk certifications that validate candidates have the skills required to obtain entry-level jobs in either product design and manufacturing and uh, or media and entertainment industries. These four certifications, AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, and Fusion 360, focus on validating skills to enter the engineering, manufacturing, and architecture fields. Oh. Uh, these two, Maya and 3ds Max, focus on validating skills vital to entering the media and entertainment fields, such as 3D modeling and animation, widely used in cinema and gaming. Uh, when a student or candidate uh, successfully passes an Autodesk Certified User exam, they receive a badge to uh, show that they've earned their certification. They receive the badge through Credly. Um, an example of, of a starting entry level job that a candidate would be um, would be able to receive as a junior CAD technician. Starting salaries are average about sixty five thousand. Um, I do want to point out that this is real. This is the real deal. Um, most people like cookie cutter say a bachelor's degree is also required, but um, I do have friends and I've heard many stories where students um, are able to show that they have the skills through certification and get on an entry level or a junior uh, um, engineering position because they know the software. There is such a skills gap right now uh, hiring managers are looking for somebody that knows what they're doing, and uh, they are willing to work with people as they are um, starting their higher ed experience and help them move up. So they actually have a, a leg up against uh, the competition to be able to fast track their career as well. So we have uh, we're always working on uh, product updates. Um, currently. We do support the 21 and 20 through 20, 23 uh, software titles. Um, we are almost finished with um, updating the exams for 2020 support. In fact, our AutoCAD exam uh, for 2024 will release, um, I believe next week. Uh, we are launching this in the next generation user interface uh, that we uh, released earlier this year. Um, they are still live in the app testing experiences, and this the next generation exam experience is uh, done very, very well. We've been able to address several challenges and improve the overall exam experience for candidates to uh, relieve a lot of uh, stress and, and testing anxiety that, that uh, candidates have been facing. Uh, we've also in, uh, added a program, Autodesk program support resource, which I will show you a little bit later. And uh, we continue to have the full learning pathway available. Um, now, the Autodesk program, we have many, uh, many ways to test um, the exam uh, formats uh, right now with the different exams, especially with the next generation exam experience. And I just kind of wanted to highlight what those three are. So we have the three. 
Um, our Fusion 360 exam is currently what we call a selective response exam. Um, uh, this uh, provides um, the candidate an opportunity to um, validate their skills through um, multiple types of selective response and knowledge-based questions. Um, it does not require the application to take the exam. The rest of the Autodesk uh, portfolio does require the Autodesk uh, application to take the exam. Um, each of these do have 30 questions. They're 50 minutes long. Uh, there are two question types. There are selected response, multiple choice, and there's also the fill in the blank questions that are calculated uh, by using the application. Um, right now, like with our classic legacy user interface, the candidates do need to toggle between the exam application and the exam window and the application window going back and forth. And we have a task bar at the bottom that allows them to easily do that. And they also need to auto open, go search for the um, project files and open those on their own and the exam will tell them where to go and how to find that and open that for, uh, for them so that they can do their exam. Um, but the what we were able to release this year is our next generation live in the app testing. And this is a preview, a highlight, and I've also uh, created a video that's on our program support page that reviews this. Um, the key improvements uh, really focus on providing a more streamlined exam experiences for the test candidates. The exam and the application windows now open side by side. This eliminates the need to toggle between the exam and the application taskbar. Um, product, project files will also open automatically. And with the window as the, this um, animation shows, the candidate has control of how big each of the screens are. They can expand the application screen so they have more, uh, they can utilize the real estate on their screen to um, work in the application and then make the uh, exam window bigger when they need to, to be better see the exam questions. And uh, for a more in-depth um, overview, uh, I will show you where the video is on the program support page. It shows a lot more of the cool things that we have done with this new UI. Um, but with that, I wanted to get into talking about um, preparing for a, an awesome, positive, uh, successful exam testing day with the Autodesk programs. Now, I know as educators, you have a lot of pieces in the air that you're constantly juggling between um, students, students' needs, special requirements, uh, working with your administration and colleagues in different cohorts. Um, and uh, working with parents and, and also making sure that all of the pieces are in place to provide a positive learning environment and a learning experience for your students. Um, everybody's situation is different and I want to uh, emphasize that I recognize that and uh, everybody will have different specific needs on uh, in their classroom and with testing days. And my purpose today is to show you where to find resources to help make sure that you are as prepared as possible. With that, um, I have this awesome uh, test day checklist uh, that we're going to review. Um, the first step on having a positive uh, test day experience is don't wait until test day to prepare. And um, there are so many things that, that um, can go wrong, but there are so many things that go, can go right. And just making sure that everything is ready to go. It can take some time and making sure that you've got everything ready in advance will make sure that your stress level is, is low and, um, and that the students are prepared and just everything is, is awesome and ready to go. And um, the second one is uh, do a trial run. Um, especially with the different updates uh, with software, the updates uh, that we push through uh, with Compass, um, updates on operating systems, you're going to want to make sure that everything 
uh, works seamlessly. And you'll also want to make sure that um, you've got everything in your account and the students' accounts are ready to go so that there aren't any surprises. I mean, that's the big, biggest thing. And doing the trial run, um, just making sure that everything uh, launches and everything the way it's supposed to it will be really beneficial. In fact, we are working on some tools that we're hoping to have launched soon that will facilitate uh, trial runs in the future and make it easier for you. Second uh, or third, know where to go for support resources. Um, we have a lot of resources on the support side and Autodesk has also put together a really good repository um, of resources for educators. And so knowing where those at, are at to answer your specific questions or to troubleshoot um, specific things that you may be facing will be really helpful. Um, uh, both Autodesk and Certiport have customer support that are available to, to help when you're troubleshooting um, and uh, self-help resources. So we'll go over those in a minute. Um, most importantly, become besties with your IT guy. Um, just with all the technolo uh, technology requirements and maybe the different firewalls and, and um, security uh, requirements that you have with your specific school district, um, uh, being besties with your IT guy will help you be able to get what you need when you need it in a timely manner and, and just make sure everything is running smoothly. I, mean, I actually have an example of this that I've uh, related to teachers in, in, uh, in the past. Um, like Rosie mentioned, I used to be a music education major and um, I do have, have two daughters that have um, gone through uh, K-12 and both of them were involved in music. Um, and uh, we were heavily involved in marching band. They spent several years as a marching band parent booster president and worked closely with our band director at the high school that my, my uh, children went to um, to help um, facilitate a lot of stuff for the marching band season. And I had the opportunity, um, both positive and negative, but I had, the, I had the opportunity to help this program transition from a well-seasoned, well-loved band director to a new band director, a current band director that was there uh, for over 30 years. I retired um, right after my youngest daughter's junior year. And he was phenomenal at being uh, best friends with everybody that he worked with, with um, colleagues in the performing and fine arts departments, uh, being friends with his administration, with the custodial staff, with the athletic department. Um, he recognized the different um, contingencies and the different people that um, that uh, had influence over the resources that he needed to help his program run smoothly. And he made sure that he had really good positive relationships with them. In fact, he was able to have 24 hour access to the school. Um, he was able to get into, he was one of the only people that had a key to the um, sound booth in the and the auditorium for con and, and we didn't have to worry about coordinating anything for concerts or any events that we had and he had access to the football field when he needed it and we actually had our own uh, practice field that we could use at any time uh, for the marching band because he had these positive uh, relationships with people with the different departments that he he worked with um, he worked years to make this happen and the, the kids loved band he had a really really good program and after he retired and we brought this new director in, uh, he burned those bridges pretty, pretty quickly. And it became very, very challenging to uh, access the school, access uh, the different things that we needed to, to um, hold events, uh, to be able to do band camp or even have uh, practice. We ended up having to share our practice field with the soccer team and the football team wouldn't let us use the, the, or the football field uh, so that we could run through the the show or anything else, it was very, very, very difficult. And to see the difference just as a, a I don't know, just as an observer and outsider seeing the difference that it made having those, having a positive relationship with those people versus not having the positive relationship, um, it really does make a difference. And so um, I can't iterate enough that becoming besties with not only people within your cohort, but especially the IT department will be able to help you 
have a positive testing experience and be able to troubleshoot or get around things uh, much more quickly, um, especially when it's super, well, like when it's a time crunch is super important. Um, that is just like, I can't stress that enough. Uh, next is to make sure that your students know their login credentials. So it is a really good idea to make sure that they have them go to certiport.com and to log into their certiport account and validate that the login, um, their user ID and their password that they think it is, is really what it is. Um, it, and uh, that you don't have that surprise on uh, test day, especially when they're sitting down trying to take the exam. Especially, uh, uh, when there's that uh, time limit, not only with your uh, class period, but also with being able to complete the, complete the exam. Uh, next, um, verify that your exam inventory is good to go. Um, one of the things that I have seen, especially when we were doing like the early days of exams from home when we were offering full service proctoring, uh, one of the things that we saw not only with the students not having their uh, login credentials, but was also a uh, testing center not having or school not having inventory to be able to test. And those are, are things that take a little bit of time to uh, remedy. And so making sure that you've got everything ready to go in advance uh, is really helpful. And then finally, um, with all the pieces, just remember to breathe. And uh, everything will will come to a close. That's the one thing that I like when working with bigger projects or getting into like, um, like getting into like D-Day and whatnot, the clock always keeps moving and um, you will get to the end and everything will complete. Um, uh, like that, that is the one thing that is, is as certain as that it, you will reach the end. And so just to remember to breathe and everything will work out. So I see a lot of comments um, coming through. I don't know, um, Rosie, if there's any questions as we're going through that yeah. you see, because I can't see the, the chat. So if there's any questions, just pop in and interrupt me. Yeah, don't worry, I got you. Um, I think right. let's just make sure that uh, towards the end, maybe we'll talk a little about uh, online exam delivery and Compass Cloud okay. and things like that. Um, but okay, I wanna make sure great. that you get to show off all the resources. Uh, oh, and then we'll, awesome. we'll touch on that. Great, it sounds great. Um, so let's go over the new resources. I'm gonna highlight them really quick and then I will um, end the slides and I will actually show you where to find them in, in the web browser. So we have created a, an Autodesk program support page. It should be a one-stop, the purpose is to be a one-stop shop for all things Autodesk. Uh, you, we have like all of the basics for the program, important updates, uh, technical requirements, not only for Compass, but also links for uh, specific software versions. Um, everything, we have FAQs and everything there, and we will continue to add resources there. So I encourage you to come back and, and check. And if you have any suggestions too, feel free to reach out to me or to Rosie and we can add um, anything that you think that might, be, might also be helpful. Um, Sorry, the, the certiport.pearsonview.com backslash Autodesk Lida is where you can find that. And in addition to this as well, we are working on a configuration exam for org, org admins to run to verify that the software and everything are good to go. Um, and the, the exams are ready. We have a, a similar thing for Microsoft and Adobe programs. And so we're creating this for Autodesk just to uh, give one other um, one other tool that will help you when you're doing trial runs to make sure everything's good to go. And in addition, and the one thing that I am really excited about, and we're just waiting for some things on our technology and to update with Compass, is an exam preview for candidates. Now this will be a basically um, a five minute trial run exam that candidates will be able to go into Compass they will be able to log in and validate that their credentials are accurate. Um, they will be able to see the exam UI and um, also run through and answer, like do one simple project just to help them um, feel comfortable with the UI and um, 
and get uh, reduce a lot of the test stage errors that usually happen. So there, are, there really aren't any surprises when they finally sit down for the actual exam. Hey, Sabrina, uh, yeah. just a clarifying question. Uh -huh. uh, so when the uh, folks were asking about how they currently have to sort of quote burn a voucher when they want to test their system, make sure everything is set up correctly, when the uh, configuration exam and the exam preview features are available, will those require a voucher? No, they will not. So those will be awesome. free. You won't have to. They will not uh, require any vouchers or inventory to take. And that those are just additional tools uh, that we are creating to help you to validate that your, your systems are ready to go. Okay, and then additional resources that we have um, that I wanted to make you aware of. Uh, Autodesk has uh, really taken a lot of time to improve their resources for educators. If you go to autodesk.com backslash educa education backslash support, they have a lot of resources that are there. And we'll go over that because they actually made a bunch of updates in the last month or so as well. Um, and, and I just want to make sure that, that you know where to go to find answers to FAQs, to go and find a community of support, and also how to, most important, how to contact the Autodesk uh, customer support. So that's like one of the biggest questions I get is where is the phone number? And unfortunately they don't have a phone number, but they do have an online chat and you can get an immediate response. And we also have that available on our support pages. And so we'll, I'll review that and show you how to find that too. And just where all the technical requirements and everything are as well. Hey Sabrina, so we have a question in the chat about any timelines, um, so maybe we, we talk a bit about that. Um, so Ronald had, has asked about what will be ready by spring 2024. I think mm -hmm. he might be specifically referring to the configuration exam and exam preview. Um, but if you do want to talk for a minute about the sort of 2024 update timeline and maybe the uh, the new next gen exam uh, UI timelines as well, um, okay. that would be good to talk about. Yeah, no, no problem. So our, I'll talk about the next gen exams first. So our next generation user interface is already out and available for the 2023 uh, software versions. You have the choice at this point to take either the classic exam as it is now or take the next generation exam experience. Uh, the next generation exam experience is, an, is a completely different exam. So you will, it's the same questions. I do want to clarify. It, um, it is the exact same questions, just the UI is different, but it does require a separate exam download. So the org admin or the proctor, anybody who has um, authorization uh, rights will need to go in and, and download the exam with the next generation UI. And it's a, it says next generation in the title, so it's pretty easy to see. Um, our, uh, we did improve the, um, a compass and put in like a, a, a pre-check in there that it will um, only allow you to see exams that you have the software downloaded for. So if you do not have 2023 downloaded, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. So you may want to just make sure that you have 2023 downloaded uh, first before you try to download that exam. Um, we are, the 2024 support will only be in the next generation UI. The AutoCAD um, exam is launching next week, and the Inventor and Revit exams are launching uh, by November. And um, we we are pretty much on schedule, so we should see that then. Um, Maya and 3ds Max are still in the classic um, exam user interface. Uh, we do have plans to put those into the next gen UI for the 2025 version year, so not this school year but next school year. And uh, Fusion 360 will continue to be a selected response exam. So as far as updates, um, a timeline for the, um, for the configura configuration exam and the exam previews for students, uh, we, uh, those are contingent. We do have a dependency on that. Those are contingent on updates uh, within Compass. And um, as some of you may be aware, we push out Compass updates to the actual platform only twice a year. And uh, we, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can get that out with this next Compass update, which is scheduled for Q1 of next year. 
which means once that is ready, we should be able to publish the exam previews for the students, which we do have um, pretty much ready. And then the, the configuration um, will be there as well. So we're hoping to have that all ready for this coming spring uh, testing for 2024. So I hope that answers questions. Yep, I think you're all set. Cool, awesome. Let's see. And then that is the last slide that I have uh, with, with my uh, presentation. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this, close this and, whoops. All right. Um, let's go ahead and review, let's see. Now I can finally see the chat. <laughs> Um, I wanted to just show you where these were. So I mentioned the Autodesk program support page. This is here. Um, I'm I'm sorry, Serena, it is still showing your uh, PowerPoint slides. So you might need to reshare so that it's your okay. uh, browser. Okay. Let's do that. I actually ended the PowerPoint, so I'm surprised I said end. So the whole technology. There we go. All right, can you see that? I'm hoping. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm sorry about that. Um, so this is the program support page and uh, it's the Autodesk. Um, when you go to uh, supportpearsonview.com backslash um, Autodesk Lida, it will come to this. And this is where we have like a, a lot of the um, information for the uh, updates, like any important updates will be here. I do, I wanted to point out this video. Um, it's a six and a half minute video and reviews more in depth, the next generation UI. And uh, is just a really good preview. So you don't have to waste any inventory or a voucher to jump in and see what that looks like. This uh, highlights it pretty well. And um, we also have information on pros, program basics, uh, the technical requirements, not only for Compass, but for every single Autodesk software version right here. Um, I would recommend, um, I actually helped a district uh, this summer that was having some issues with the exam experience being glitchy, like a little bit boggy and being really, really slow. And as we reviewed everything, um, even though that they had met the minimum requirements to run the Autodesk software um, on the, the computers in their learning lab, they, uh, they weren't uh, on the recommended requirements. And so trying to run Compass and, and the Autodesk software, Autodesk is pretty robust and is pretty, um, pretty heavy and requires a lot of muscle in order to be able to run. And so making sure that you meet the recommended requirements is what I would recommend because then you should have enough um, enough power to be able to run uh, both Compass and the, the program, um, the application, without having any glitches or any delays. Um, uh, that will definitely help. So uh, making sure that you work with your IT department as well to look at any type of additional system requirements that they have on that might be also slowing down your system um, will help improve the exam experience too. Um, version support is here too for education. Um, the Autodesk does have two different types of licenses that are available for commercial licensing. They have named user license where each individual has to have their own license. Education is different where uh, it's the multi-user network license configuration. And uh, that will uh, continue to uh, be the case moving forward. But if you do have a named user license um, situation within a school or an independent organization, there is resources there. And you can get the information to, uh, for that here um, going to Autodesk website from these links. Um, annual updates, there's information about how to create packages so that um, if you don't want to do auto updates and keep everything, you can keep everything here and not have to go search for it. Um, and then any, any other types of things with exam readiness, uh, best practices and FAQs are also down here. So 
Um, Rosie, do you see any questions about our program support page? I don't think so. I think you're good to move on. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'm going to talk about our regular support page really quick. So um, one of the cool things that I think is great, I've actually had to use this even though I'm a CertiCorps employee, um, is the online chat for customer support. So when you go to the customer support and you click on uh, um, CertiCorps Authorized Testing Center, there's a search box here. And it takes you here. You can go to um, customer service. And so there's global support or there's uh, inside the United States or outside. So if you click on global, you can go to a live chat. So you can also email or, or call. Um, I like live chats because they're pretty quick. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that this was here and this was an option, which is really cool. Um, Autodesk community also has that. When you go to education support, this is, there is so much information here and it's pretty exciting the different things that they've been able to do. So the first thing that I wanted to make sure that you knew was how to contact them when you're running into an issue with licensing or anything, or you have a question and need to get like a real person. Um, you can click, when you go to this page, you can click on this, um, this icon, it's supposed to be a question mark, but it's not showing up as a question mark on my end. But when you click on that, it pops up with this Autodesk Assistant. And I know I've seen this like with health insurance companies and different things, it's kind of to help you just get through the basics, but eventually it will, when you ask them to speak to somebody, it will get to an actual real person on the back end and they will help look at your account, they'll help troubleshoot. They will even create a service ticket for you and have somebody follow up. They're really, really good about following up within 24 hours. Um, most of it is through email and uh, helping you resolve any issues that you may have. Uh, there is a specific team for the education support and uh, with licensing because it is a different licensing model. And so um, they will need to forward to that. And so Sometimes you do need to be a little bit patient, but they are usually really quick. And the biggest thing I can't stress enough is making sure that you have a ticket number. Um, you can always reach out to me if you do have a little bit of challenges getting something resolved. Um, every single time, Alex will ask me, you know, what's their ticket number? And they can't do anything until it's in their system. So getting that ticket number through uh, this is super, super helpful and will allow me to help you when you do have like a very unique uh, situation that is taking a little bit longer to resolve. Um, there are also here like a lot of places for um, like FAQs and different things. Um, support is great. Uh, this is like educational support. There's product support, system requirements, different downloads. There's just so much things here. Um, but the thing that I wanted to make sure that you knew about was the communities. So there are Autodesk communities. Um, where they, there's a lot of forums and, and uh, a lot of them are specific to the software title. Um, and you can type in like specific issues that you might be having. And there are uh, the Autodesk team is in here answering questions as well as other subject matter experts within industry that are there helping uh, you out as well. Um, and there are also groups, and I thought this was really cool. Um, there are a bunch of different uh, groups and you do, I was going to log in, you have to be logged in, but there's um, a, a way for you to see like where there are specific user groups within your area or give you an option and opportunity to create a local group too. And they do have a student group uh, specifically for education that is public. And I mean, this is pretty cool. They've created, they've created um, an education library. They have different events for educators, um, specific Questions too for edu uh, installation, licensing, and administration, specific things for Fusion 360, um, 
rooms for students and like a blog, which is, is new, like this is all new. These are tools and, and, and these are our, our new tools that Autodesk has created because they have been listening uh, to your needs and they're trying to create additional support to help, um, help with your programs. So I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of all of these all of these things, and um, just I would encourage you to go in and peruse uh, this page specifically and um, see what's there, and to bookmark anything that that you need so that it's easier to find when you need to go back. But anyway, that is pretty much everything that I had. Um, are there any questions about any of the resources that we've reviewed? Not yet, I think. Um, we will make sure that in the follow-up email, in addition to the presentation, in addition to the recording, that we include uh, some of these extra links that you've shown. Uh, these new materials from the, the educator-specific materials from Autodesk are definitely worth everyone here looking through. So no worries if, if folks here haven't, didn't immediately sort of screenshot it uh, to capture the URLs. We'll send that along. I guess one thing uh, you might, we did have some questions earlier on about uh, online exams. Do we want to talk about, do you want to talk about that at all? Um, sure. So Compass Cloud, is that? Yeah. That, okay. All right. So I'm going to go to Let's see if I can find it. All right, so um, as, as everyone is aware, Compass is our platform that we use to deliver our exams. And we have three different ways uh, that you can access Compass. Um, we have Compass Local, which is uh, what has been traditionally the, the way that we've had to deliver its uh, local install on computers within your testing lab. That's the thing that everyone is super familiar with. Uh, the second was uh, created uh, as a result of the pandemic that we we went through uh, with exams from home and being able to access Compass through virtual machines and to set up uh, testing sessions through that. Uh, that is still available and will continue to be so, uh, continue to uh, be available um, moving forward. And we also have a uh, Compass Cloud that we currently have in beta um, between now and the end of the year. So Compass Cloud is um, uh, basically, it is a, an opportunity for um, testing centers. It's kind of a hybrid between Exemption Problem and Compass Local. So it's an option for you to use, to access um, the virtual machines while you're in your testing lab. And so it's not meant, and it's not set up for remote proctoring like exams from home is. It's meant um, to allow, um, can, like it's basically we, you can access the virtual machines and have everything set up there and not have to worry about any of that stuff because you're accessing our machines um, through the cloud, but it's still um, in-person testing. And uh, like I mentioned before, it is currently in beta. And um, we'll, once we're, um, it will be in beta until we're, um, we've got like all of the bugs and stuff worked out of it. And we're confident that we can run into like a full, full launch. Anybody can participate in the beta uh, by signing up as the, in the org admin um, uh, role. And it should be good to go. What questions? do you have about Compass Cloud? I think that was pretty helpful information. So thank you for adding yeah. that. Um, let's see if we've had other questions. We had had someone earlier ask if online exams are here to stay. So that's yes. encouraging for them. Yes, um, they are. We do have some, someone asked about subscription fees. Um, I will say our, there isn't a fee for becoming a proctor or having any, uh, a, a test center, um, though there is, uh, of course, a cost for exam vouchers or site licenses. Um, I also added a link in the chat about the fact that Autodesk software is free for qualifying students, educators, and academic institutions. I'm always surprised that 
that folks don't know that since it's an amazing thing. Um, and it's such an amazing thing to, to be able to learn to use the software as an educator or a student or to, to help set up your students for success by, by coordinating that for your school. So we will include that link in the follow-up email as well. Um, we did get a question now that says, should Compass be installed on lab computers? So if you are doing if you are doing a local install, yes, it does need to be installed. I know Compass Cloud is some specifics as well. And if you go to this page here, when you go to educator, like certiport.com, go to educator resources, uh, Compass Exam Delivery, you can learn more about Compass Cloud here and, and uh, find out like the specifics. There will be a Compass Cloud uh, app that will need to be um, put on to all of the local computers and all of that information on how to do that and uh, participate in the beta is here. And I do wanna reiterate what Rosie said, there are no fees for any of this um, to become a CATC, to become a proctor, to create an account. There are no fees whatsoever. The only time it does um, cost any money is when you purchase the exam. So when you purchase exam vouchers, uh, purchase inventory, that is where uh, the fees come into play. But uh, the software is free, um, uh, both on both on the CertiPort side uh, with our Compass software. It's free to download. Um, Autodesk is free to download. Uh, it's just when you need the exams, that's uh, what is not free. So. Awesome. Thanks for clarifying that. We have gotten some love for, for Compass Cloud in the chat for people who have used it for yeah. other programs. Um, and we've had folks ask about, oh, about Vine vouchers. So we did have someone who is US-based ask about where students can purchase vouchers. So I'm guessing that's rather than if an institution isn't buying it on behalf of their students, it is something that individuals, including students, are able to purchase on their own. So I will put that link in the chat as well. Yeah, um, and this is, is relatively you. new. Yeah, so I I will also show you. You can like individuals can purchase. Uh, we do have a a B two C site set up, um, and you can go either like school test center or individual purchaser. I'm um, here, and it will take you. Uh, Rosie put the link into our our shop, our sort of port B two C site, um, and we do have like specifics. I would uh, if you are a higher ed institution and are looking ways for your students to purchase vouchers on their own. I would highly recommend also reaching out to your sort of court representative um, about that because we can add like specific, th specific things for you that are specific for higher ed um, as well. And so there are some additionals just outside of what's on the, on the BCC site. So that's a great point. I've put a, I've also put a link in the chat for the sales contact form. So like Sabrina said, uh, if the, the store that we put in there is really for one-off for people who are really pursuing this on their yeah. own, uh, but institutions who want to make this available to their students and either pay for it um, or, or subsidize it, you're definitely going to want to look into our volume discounting and our licenses and our, um, our sales reps are incredibly useful people. Uh, so you're going to want to want to chat with them um, and see what, what options are best fit for your institution in your situation. Yeah. And also going here, school test center purchases, when you go to the buy, that's also where you can find information as well. So I'm just looking through the rest of the questions. So I guess one last plug I would like to do is for the Autodesk, um, I'm gonna stop sharing. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, so I, the one other thing that I want to do is just put one that last plug in for the next generation UI. Um, it is a, just a much improved uh, user experience for the candidate. And I would highly recommend if you have not uh, used that in your testing experience to test that out. We did have um, a school in North Carolina, a district actually, that used a school as a pilot um, to see how they liked it versus the classic UI. 
And uh, the teacher that ran the pilot told me she had every single one of her students be able to successfully complete and pass the exam the first time. And these were AutoCAD um, certifications uh, that they specifically took. And it was really positive to hear because the rest of the district um, still had a little bit of challenges. Uh, North Carolina does have some additional security protocols that they have to go through as well that we've been working through with them. Um, but it was a really positive experience and she highly recommended while I was there at their uh, summer CTE conference that, that uh, teachers move over to the next Gen UI. And like I mentioned before, we do have it for 2023 and we are launching 2024 uh, this fall. Uh, AutoCAD will be out next week. So I would highly recommend that. And to answer the question that I did see on the um, on there about Compass Cloud having the screen side by side and auto load files, yes, it will. It will, um, because that is the next generation UI is at the actual exam. So the next gen UI will be available. It's available in exams from home and will be available in Compass Cloud and it is also available in uh, Compass Local. I mean, we'll just need to let your, your students know that they need to uh, select the next generation exam uh, when they select the uh, exam, especially when they're in Compass Local and they're the ones doing that selection. Um, and then I also saw a question about, let's see, from Dana about having trouble with your students accessing Fusion 360 student accounts. Um, I think I would need a little bit more information um, to be able to help so that, that we can find a resolution for you. But I would also recommend going to that, the education website um, that I highlighted earlier and going through the support to see if you can find um, the answer there. But I'm more than happy to help you troubleshoot that if you wanna reach out to me afterwards. And um, let's see. Thank you, Rosie, for popping my email address in there. It's sabrina.beck at pearson.com. So Dana, if you want to go ahead and email me, um, I'm more than happy to set up a call and we can figure that out together. And then, let's see, I think those are all the questions. I don't see any other ones. I think the most important question that I wanted to ask everyone is what is your favorite fall flavor? Yeah, I'll take a look at what people yeah. put in the, uh, yeah. in the survey as well. Yeah, yeah we've been in, in my household, my daughters and I, we've been going through, you know, is it pumpkin spice or is it caramel apple? Um, uh, is it chai? Like, what, what, do, what do we like? And so it's been kind of like an ongoing battle in my home. And so I was just curious. Ooh, maple. It's actually yeah, really pumpkin, good. Pumpkin definitely <laughs> won in the uh, poll at the beginning. I love the answer of tamales, and I'm going to make that my answer now. So thank yes. you, Tiffany. Hot um, apple cider. The pumpkin spice, for sure. It's definitely turned, and that is, I'm not going to lie, like pumpkin. I love pump, caramel pumpkin. That's like my favorite. Love it. I'm, I'm in Miami right now where it doesn't in fact ever really look like autumn but this conversation is helping me <laughs> feel in a nice autumnal mood so maybe I'll have to go get a seasonal bev after this yes exactly um, I will say just I, I want to close out by saying thanks to everyone for one for being so active in the chat and sharing such good questions we will be sending out the recording for this uh webinar as well as um, the PDF of Sabrina's deck and a bunch of the links that she showed today. Um, I know that some of you are probably already excited to dig around those new parts of the uh, Autodesk site she showed with the various um, educator resources, educator community stuff. Um, and then we'll also have a blog post shortly that'll uh, point out some of the, the key points from here. Um, but definitely feel free to share any of those items with, with you know, friends in other departments, uh, teachers in other schools, folks that you think would would benefit from this information. Awesome. And if there's no more questions, I'll say thank you, Sabrina. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your your knowledge. Um, and thanks to, to everyone. Yes, we will put our email, I put emails in the chat one more time. Um, and then of course, feel free to respond to the uh, recording email when it goes out later. Um, and definitely let us know what's what's going on at your institution, ways we can help, fun ideas for future webinars, whatever you want to share. Yeah, um, we, we love to hear from our teachers. Awesome. Well, on that note, enjoy the rest of your days and enjoy your weekends, everyone.
we'll, we'll be right. back soon. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend.